92.1 WROI as we uh, go across the console and say good morning to uh, the one and only Brian Johnson of the Fulton County Community Foundation. Time now for our monthly visits. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Randy. How are you? I'm all right. Although Great. I think winter may Maybe be here. on the cusp of being here. Uh, I, I think it is here. Okay. Okay. It, it has already reached the high for today of 33 degrees. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I think since we all know that the radio station controls the weather, <laughs> that's what a lot of people think. That. Yeah. Uh, like I say, I just don't shoot the messenger. Okay. I'm just the messenger. Okay. So we'll try not to. So, <laughs> hey, we've got a lot of things going on. You do. The end of the year is kind of a busy time, so I've got a number of things here that I wanted to cover. Um, first off, I wanted to start off with a note about scholarship applications. Um, we're looking at December 1st as being the date when our application will be available on our website. Okay. Um, so if you are a graduating senior looking forward to graduating in the 2022-23 school year from high school, check that out. We've got um, over 50 scholarships that apply for Fulton County wow. students, so um, check that out. Um, you'll have a little bit of time. Um, first part of February is when that application is due, but um, some of the different scholarships have different criteria. Uh, may include some different pieces of information that students may need to obtain from other sources, so um, please check that out December 1st, nicf.org. Um, I had a couple of notes from our scholarship coordinator, Shannon Berger, said um, make sure you have email addresses correct of people that you're asking for reference from if that's included in the scholarship because they get an email from our system saying <laughs> so and so has asked that you complete this information. If that information is not accurate, then they don't get that email. And then you so, don't finish your application. There you go. So. <laughs> Please make sure that you have that information accurate and handy when you're doing the application. And when you're done with the application, there's a submit button. So make sure that it's complete, but make sure that you also hit the submit button because if they don't hit the submit button, then again, they won't be eligible for those scholarships. But um, thank you to the donors that make these possible. Um, it's really neat to see how our community supports students. Um, when we think about 2022 we had over hundred and sixty thousand dollars in scholarships that went to local students and that's just an amazing number when you think it about is, it. It is. That's crazy. So, December 1st NICF.org check that out. Um, another thing that we've got that um, students may be interested <coughs> in um, we do have the opportunity for some internships through the Community Foundation. Um, we have had the opportunity to have interns that are current college students um, through the last few years. Um, Lilly Endowment Inc. has provided us with some funding to be able to do that. And so we're starting that process looking for um, a student that may qualify for that. So um, current college students, um, I know last year, um, the last couple of years we've had the opportunity to have a um, student that had part of their college done before they graduated as a senior in high school. So um, we don't know, that's a, often a case-by-case -case basis, so if there's students that are listening and that say, hey, I may be interested in this and I have maybe some college classes under my belt and um, they want to reach out to us, that's something we don't know always, but we can ask there and see. So if, if somebody's listening and interested in that, um, our marketing director, Hannah Bainey is the person to contact on that. You can reach out to her by email, Hannah, and that's H-A-N-N-A-H at NICF.org, or give our office a call, 574-223-2227. Uh -huh. um, and that would be um, looking for some students for internships. Perfect. Great opportunity. Great opportunity, and we've, we've been fortunate to have some really great interns work with us, and hopefully they feel the same way, <laughs> and i um, looking forward to helping those students get their start in, in learning about the work world. So, um, something else that has been a big thing that we've been working on over the last year and a half um, is a software rollout. Mm -hmm. We yes. have a new database um, that we've been using, and just last week, um, we made that available to 
fun founders online. Um, uh, of course, with anything new like this, there's always a few times where messages may not get delivered or um, emails may go to junk mail or spam. So um, the new software allows donors to be able to access information about their funds online. Um, things like fund statements, information about donations, um, things like that. And it's, it's a really great system. So I'd encourage if, if we have fund founders listening and are interested in um, getting involved in that, um, give us a holler. We sent out two emails last week. Um, I should have received one hopefully on Monday saying <laughs> this is coming. And then around Wednesday or Thursday, another email with some um, information about how to create an account through the system. If you didn't receive either or both of those emails and you'd like to be included in that, give us a holler. Because it's, like I said, it, it's a really great system and, and donors can look things up. Um, if you have a donor advised fund, um, those donors can make um, grant requests um, and make suggestions about where the monies from their fund are spent and that process can be completed online as well. So a really great system saves a lot of paperwork, saves emails back and forth, saves scanning, signing, all those things. Some time. Some saves time. Some time. Uh, makes it simpler for donors to actually be able to look up organizations and and say, hey, this is where I want my money to go, this is how much, and click send, and it Done. comes to us, and it's a, a great process. So, if you didn't receive that email last week, either of them, let us know, um, and we can get you set up on the um, system, and if you have, if you did receive it, you're having any issues with us, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, it's a new, new process for us, and we're looking forward to um, being able to provide even a better service for donors and fund founders um, as we as we move into the new generation of, of software yes. has so, been pretty exciting we've been looking forward to this for awesome more years than i can count probably <laughs> so so anyway so that's um, some of the current events we've got going on um, wanted to talk a little bit about this event that I think I heard on the radio advertised, uh, Giving Tuesday. Something about Giving Tuesday, okay. yeah. Sounds sound yeah. familiar sounds to familiar. you. Sounds familiar. I've heard, heard a little bit about it. Well, we're a little over a week away from Thanksgiving. Yes, it is. And so, um, Giving Tuesday, of course, we have Thanksgiving. Then you got Black Friday. You'll probably be standing in line somewhere at like 3 or 4 o'clock on uh, no. Friday. Me neither. No, no. <laughs> Um, then we I've got, done that once, that was enough. Okay. Small Business <laughs> Saturday, of course, is that Saturday mm -hmm. after Thanksgiving. The, the Chamber of Commerce is doing a great job of promoting the concept of shopping locally, shopping small. Um, then Cyber Monday, everybody I, does it. I might be more. You might participate might, might in, that? Participate okay. in that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then Giving Tuesday is the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Kind of the, keep it going the, right in line. Yes, kick off to the to the giving season. So it's a, actually a worldwide initiative. We've participated in this for a number of years, um, but we use it as a day to celebrate all that we've done in Fulton County. Um, celebrate the giving, celebrate the impact that the Community Foundation has made um, as a thank you to the donors that have made that possible. So on November 29th, we'll be celebrating Giving Tuesday We'll start at 10 a.m. that morning, go till 5.30 that evening. We'll have some refreshments available from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We'll have lunch provided. Rumor mm -hmm. has it's going to be pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Free lunches are always good. Free lunches is always good, especially <laughs> when it's a good free lunch. That's right. So um, from 11 to 2, stop by the office. We'll have lunch. Um, we will have a drive through option if folks want to just drop off a donation, pick up a lunch on the way through. Um, but we will have our office open, stop in, um, see some of the things that we've been able to do throughout the year. Um, rumor has it WROI will be there. Yes, they will. Okay, I think, you, I think we got you guys scheduled yeah. from 11 to 1 yeah. that day. So nice. have, some, have some interviews with, yeah, we'll talk with some, about yeah. some things that have happened yeah. over the past couple of years. Um, Right around noon, we'll have the announcement of the 2022 Lifetime Philanthropy Award. Um, I think it'll be a it'll be a great celebration there. I'm excited for that announcement. Um, 
individual that's made a huge impact in our community. And of course, we also have some matching funds available. Yes. We've been talking about this a little bit. Um, we do have, um, thanks to the folks out at Rapid View, um, they offered us some matching for some specific funds and then also for our community fund. Um, they offered 5000 each for Fulton County Parks Department, Gem Art Educators Fund, Camp We Can, the 4-H Dog Club, and the Olive Jane Hathaway Animal Center Fund. Um, some of those funds have already met their matching goal. Um, a couple of them still have some that they need to raise, so if you're interested in Camp We Can or the Gem Art Educators Fund, of course Camp We Can is a um, camp for individuals with unique needs um, that happens out north of Rochester each year, a, a wonderful opportunity, and the, the Gem Art Educators Fund is one that supports the art program at the Rochester Community Schools, K-12. through provides things like art supplies, maybe if they have a special speaker at some point or a special project. Um, that fund helps support the art program at the school. So a neat fund there. And then we also have $50,000 that's available to the Fulton County Community Fund. And that's the fund that makes grants throughout our community. Uh, thinking about some of the good things that have happened over the past few years. Think about if you're in Akron, they had a pretty cool summer concert series yeah. this year. Um, have done some things over in the park. Um, here in Rochester, last month we talked a little bit about the Rochester Youth League, a grant there. Um, you look around our community and just see the impact that these funds have made. Um, so we have up to $50,000 that is available for that. Um, we're a good ways into that, so um, we have a, about ten thousand dollars to raise on that. Okay. So been very, very well supported, and, and really an amazing thing um, for our community. So, and that will help us make more grants in the future. Yeah, that's when, always a good thing. When we think about those community fund grants, you think about the fact that this year we're going to be able to, by the end of the year, grant close to three hundred thousand dollars to wow. projects in Fulton County. So really exciting to be able to have um, supported so many good things and, and make an impact. And, and when we talk about grants, just kind of an example, um, one thing we've been hearing from our area food pantries has been the fact that they're seeing a pretty significant increase in the need. Um, a lot of people coming in for the first time that have maybe never needed to use a food pantry and so our grants committee met a couple weeks ago and made the decision to grant to some area food pantries awesome. to, to support those needs and it's really neat to see the impact um, that folks are ha these food pantries are having in folks lives that maybe hey i don't have any food where do i get food um, so these food pantries have really been a a life-changing things for a lot of people in our community so thanks to to donors that have donated to our community fund and thanks to the food pantries that are that are using these dollars to help support those in need in our community so so again giving tuesday november 29th 10 a.m to 5 30 come for lunch between 11 and 2 make a donation find out about how we've used our funds this year. Um, just come and celebrate with us as we kick off this season of giving. Awesome, looking okay. forward to it. Um, one thing I wanted to mention today was end of year giving. Mm -hmm. We always have a conversation about this about this time of year because a lot of folks are thinking about, well, I need to, <coughs> need to do something here or I'd like to support something. So um, a lot of times people say, well, I can make a gift. How do, how do I do that? Well, you can walk in our door and drop off cash or write a check or something like that, but um, there's a number of other tools that are really useful for donors as well that a lot of times can be even more advantageous than somebody just walking in and, and dropping off a check. Of course, all donations to the Community Foundation are tax deductible, so that's often a concern for folks. But um, some other tools that we often see used um, this time of the year, of course, end of year, a lot of people are thinking about tax planning. Think about um, what I can give and how that may affect my tax burden. Um, 
a lot of times we, we think about the concept of voluntary versus involuntary giving. And the concept of voluntary giving is giving that I can control. I can, I can give that where I want. Involuntary giving, not to pick on IRS, but they're not going to say, well, you don't have the op. They're not going to say, you have the option to give us yeah. money this year. They're going to say, you owe this much. All right. Um, part of part of that voluntary giving can actually help reduce that tax burden. So, if if we have folks li listening, um, of course every situation is unique. So I always encourage folks that my disclaimer is I'm not a tax professional. Um, talk with your tax planner or your accountant to see maybe how a gift would maybe affect the taxes that you owe. So I always put that disclaimer in here and say, check, because a lot of times it doesn't cost as much. Right. When I say cost, it, you think about if you make a gift, it may reduce that tax burden some. Um, it doesn't cost as much as it sounds like. And you can make a difference. You can say, hey, I really want to support this, so I'm going to give to this. And in turn, it will reduce my tax burden. Um, some of the tools that we see employed a lot of times are things like stock gifts. One neat thing about a stock gift is if somebody says, I want to make a gift and I have this stock that has appreciated. Now, I know market conditions may not be real great if you bought something at the start of the year, but <laughs> there are still a lot of folks that have appreciated stock. Um, if somebody gifts that directly to a charity like the Community Foundation, um, they can often eliminate capital gains taxes that they may have to pay on that otherwise if they sold that stock. Mm. Um, so you think about the savings there, depending on the tax bracket, that can be a pretty significant savings. You can make a gift and it not cost you as much as what the charity actually receives. So you think about things like um, reducing or eliminating capital gains tax on things like stock or um, real estate. I you know in the past we've, we've been able to accept a number of properties, whether it be houses, farm ground, things like that. And, and same thing applies if it's an appreciated asset. Um, oftentimes you can reduce tax liability on that. Um, something else that's been a really great tool is IRA rollovers. Um, once, a, once an individual hits, depending on how old they are, because laws have changed a little bit, um, either 70 and a half or 72 years old, um, and they have a traditional IRA, they have to take what's called a required minimum distribution. Whether you want it or not, they say this is how much you have to take this year. Um, it comes in as income. Things like tax liabilities, again, fall into that. If, if there's an individual that says, you know what, I have to take this, but I don't really need it, it's going to negatively affect my taxes, um, they can actually roll that over to a qualified charity. So it's a pretty simple process where, where a donor can just say, hey, I want, talk, talks to the custodian of their IRA and says, I want to give X amount from my IRA to a charity. And then that can fulfill the required minimum distribution for that. Um, and that can um, help with the tax situation again, talk with your tax planner to see how that would affect it. But, um, it's a neat, neat tool that donors have been able to use. Up to $100,000 per year um, is able to be rolled over from an IRA directly to a charity and fulfill that minimum required distribution and also make a impact in the community locally. And that's that, that's that voluntary giving that we talk about that donors can say, hey, I've seen this organization make an impact. I want to help them and I can do it and use this tool. So um, I just encourage folks as, as we think about getting towards the end of the year, think about um, things like um, an IRA rollover or a gift of some sort and, and how that may help reduce tax liabilities while you can direct it to a cause that you're passionate about and a really neat way to, to be able to make an impact in our local community. So. That's my plug for end of year giving. And there you go. Obviously, we want to remind everybody again, Giving Tuesday giving coming Tuesday. up November 29th. Yep. So uh, that, that's, that's the big 
plan to join us. We're yeah. looking forward to a good day, a good celebration. Um, we were just talking about the weather. <laughs> Said it'd be 75 degrees right. somewhere. Right, somewhere. Whether it's yeah. Rochester or not, just, just we don't know. It's a, pretend. It's It'll anyone. be warm in our office. There you go. We'll have some good snacks, <laughs> some good food. And, and a drive through so you don't and have to drive through If you so say, yeah. hey, I'm coming on my lunch hour, you can get some food, you can make a donation, you can get that all done without ever having to get out of the warmth of your car. Or something. Awesome. So anyway. So encourage folks, if you have time, stop by November 29th. We'd love to see you, love to have you help us celebrate the impact the Community Foundation has made in our community. Brian, thanks for stopping by. We'll look forward to talking to you again on the 29th. We are looking forward to it, Randy. Thank you. Again, Brian Johnson of the Fulton County Community Foundation with his monthly report.